Let's review Animal Soccer World! Again! But this time, the digital book version! Cause that exists! Der Ball ist rund, der Spielball Spaß, den Jungle ging's ins Tor. Und wir alle singen, weit auf vor. Yes, for some reason in 2017, some of the Dingo Pictures movies got a digital book adaptation by the company Edutain for Kids. Everything about this and Edutain for Kids just seems very strange. Like, adapting Dingo Pictures movies. We're seriously adapting Dingo Pictures movies now? And adding to this strangeness, the Edutain for Kids website is mostly an unfinished broken mess with just about every section having nothing but testing under it, including About Us. Because I guess it takes them years to find anything out about themselves. Rather bizarrely, the guest section has some kind of password required to access it. I bet if you do know the password, it probably just says testing in it. The one section with actual content is Home, and that lets you read just about every one of their books, for the most part. The only difference with the ones that you can access for free off the Edutain for Kids site and the ones they sell is an Edutain for Kids watermark being on every page. This is why I say you can read every story for the most part as well, because sometimes the Edutain for Kids logo isn't semi-translucent, so it completely blocks the text once in a while. I'm guessing the watermark was supposed to be semi-translucent on all the pages, but whoever was adding them wasn't careful about the opacity. Or they just didn't give a shit. I do particularly love, too, that there's a page with the Edutain for Kids logo watermark over the Edutain for Kids logo. Now, according to the Dingo Pictures wiki, which I love that a Dingo Pictures wiki exists now, at least one of the founders of Edutain for Kids, Mikael Duke Goldschmidt Sondergaard, was involved with one of the many Dingo Pictures distribution companies, Kids Only, where he was the CEO. Now, whether or not they actually worked out a deal with Dingo Pictures properly to make these book adaptations of some of their movies, who knows? Earlier on, the Edutain for Kids site would show artwork from some of the Dingo Pictures home video releases, including stuff they didn't adapt into books like Lion and the King and Waboo. But of course, clicking these didn't actually take you to anything. All that was displayed was the Hello World WordPress placeholder text. By the way, Edutain for Kids totally has a Redbubble store where you can get a mug with the Bremen Town musicians or a shower curtain with King Magad and Robin. I know a lot of you have been looking for that. So, the Dingo Pictures movies that Edutain for Kids adapted were Dalmatians, the first one, which, by the way, is the only one of their ebooks to have an audio version on their site. The Dalmatians. Puppies in trouble. Crumb was a playful and devoted father, and Dot was a caring and endearing mother. She formed a big smile on her face while picturing Crumb all alone. Oh, Crumb. <laughs> At the dog food factory, Timmy and Toby were busy sticking labels on dog food cans. But if they stopped working, they would get some harsh beating from Pollux. It seems your last beating up was not enough for you, eh? Please don't. They also adapted Anastasia, where they decided, hey, let's try to cash in on Frozen as well by making Anastasia look like Elsa. Balto, complete with the stupid seal and bear story, and just like Mondo's Christmas in New York, they took the design of Jenna from the 95 animated Balto movie. The story of Lucy looking for her damn hairbrush and falling in love with Charlie, the cat way too old for her in Nice Cats, and, of course, Anastasia. Animal Soccer World. They also have one non-Dingo Pictures adaptation of the Hans Christian Andersen story, The Swine Herd. Though sometimes it's multiple swine herds in their version. There's also a possibility there's a few other Hans Christian Andersen stories that they've adapted that no one can really find as they're not on their site or for sale anywhere. Who cares about their non-Dingo crap though? We're here for the Waboos, am I right? Interestingly, on Amazon, the author listed for these is a Hans David Anderson. Now, while there was a Leo Nornberg Anderson involved with Edutain for Kids, I believe this is just a play on Hans Christian Anderson. And there's probably no real Hans David Anderson that was involved with this. 
Yeah, right. This is a Hans David Anderson conspiracy. I will find out the truth about Hans David Anderson no matter what. <laughs> I don't really find anything new within the first few results on Google. I give up. Anyway, let's get into this weird bizarro version of Animal Soccer World with all the redrawn Dingo Pictures characters. We even get a character rundown which lets us know that they've kept some of these names consistent and renamed others. Crummel the dog is now just Crum. Well, I don't want to be disappointed by my stupid son. I'll just name him Crum. If he exceeds that, I'll be happy. Robin Lyon from Lion and the King, who was renamed to what sounded like Joey, was actually Jovi, and that's what they call him here. Harry Birdhole, I guess, was also just perfect the way he was. That annoying nurse duck is apparently named Gertrude. Uh, e -oh, e -oh, e -oh, e -oh, e -oh. Evil dog from Dalmatians with the puppy labor factory, I guess, is one of those same dogs as they were called Castor and Pollux. Which, by the way, was a sweet Greek mythology reference, and in the original stories, Castor and Pollux totally loved making kids label dogs food. Who knows why Dingo does things. Diamond's Panther is still named Jack Off like he was, and apparently this lazily named Boss Dog Boss from Dalmatians is still Boss. I'm the boss. Boss. Butcher Dog, I guess, really pigged out literally and turned into Jamie Janice? Oh, wait, no. There's also Butcher the Bulldog as well. I guess there's just Double Butchers. Gonna guess they just messed up the pig's name there. Which butcher will butcher who first? <laughs> yeah, well, that's not a surprise. King Magad is just Jungle King, and Wabu is named Dingo? Dingo? Who dares call the great Wabu Dingo? I'm a raccoon who bounces around like a kangaroo, you idiot! You had my name on your seat at one point! And you team for kids is so stupid! Did they just rename Wabu Dingo because he's the Dingo Pictures mascot? If you haven't already scrubbed your brain of the movie, they also confusingly named a non-Dingo Dingo, but it was one of those weird gophers. It is Dingo! The Dalmatian is still called Sasha, and the S&M ducks are called the Hooligies. They're just hooligans, not S&M ducks! Uncle Albert is still here with the referee! Glad we know that name now. Also, Bremen Town Musicians? Yeah, that's too much. You guys are just the band. And don't forget cheerleaders! On a hot summer day, Crumb, a cocker spaniel with shiny brown fur. Oh, that's just grease. He had just passed by a yellow house when he saw a familiar face smiling back at him. Hey, Jovi, what are you doing today? Crumb greeted Jovi, the lion cub. Hi, Crumb. I'm not really sure, said Jovi, yawning. Want to visit some friends? Sure! Glad they didn't alter the boring opening at all. Wouldn't want to entertain anyone too much. They passed by a band of musicians. It's super important to note this because no, it's not. They saw someone near the well, and Jovi immediately recognized Harry in his usual newscaster getup. As they approached, Crumb and Jovi heard chaos, blaring sirens, police, and fire brigades. Alarmed, they rushed to see what was going on. Apparently, Harry was bored that nothing new and interesting was happening. He was bored, so he thought he'd incite panic and fear. Great guy, that Harry Birdhole. So he was just practicing in case something newsworthy happens. Doo-doo-doo, reporter Birdhole, he still sucks. Man, I like the Bremen Town musicians before they like switched out every original member. Those were the band's dark days. Crumb and Jovi were relieved. They thought something bad had happened. It has.
Suddenly, Nurse Gertrude the duck appeared. Uh, ee, uh, ee, uh, ee, uh, ee, uh, ee, uh. Everybody was intrigued, including the birds who aren't real characters in the story. So they followed her. What seemed to be the problem? Loud roars and growls were heard as Castor the Doberman and Jacko the Black Panther punched and bit each other repeatedly. This is the greatest fight that I, Dingo, have ever seen! You're not Dingo, damn it! The fight had apparently happened because of the memory of a ball, and the fight suddenly stops because of nothing, and I guess Caster is suddenly happy as shit. Now prepare to be stunned by the art change on the next page! Wow, look at that! They raised their arms and smiled more! Wow, the Jungle King! Can't we just fix a match between the two of you to settle this once and for all? Suggested Crumb, raising his voice a bit to be heard by everyone in the crowd. That got everybody's attention, especially Castor and Jacko. A competition to determine who the best kicker is? That could work. Everybody was so excited they started discussing how this could work. Playing ball with a ball is a really revolutionary idea. Castor would be the captain of the Wild Dogs, and Jovi would be the captain of the Jungle Kings. Uh, I think they mean Jacko there. I don't think the little lion cub is supposed to be captain of the team. They needed to finalize their team soon and practice. In two weeks, the championship would commence. So a dog and panther randomly fight, some kid shows up and says, Hey, you two should play ball, and then suddenly there's a championship on the line? The two friends figured they probably wouldn't be on the same team since the wild dogs preferred, well, dogs. Wow, this is really tackling some deep issues. They both agreed it was just a game and their friendship would remain the same. It would continue to be based on boredom. While Harry's helping to move along global warming with the most pointless flyer printing ever, we find out that Cat on Boots lost his boots, but hey, at least the dumb pelican does look a bit better in the book. Harry promptly flew out to distribute the leaflets. He left them everywhere for all to see. He promised to help pick up the leaflets and clear up afterwards. You know what would be easier then, Pelly? Just handing them to people instead of just throwing them at them and littering all over the place. This promotion is so stupid. Almost everybody wanted to be a part of it. Not me! Oh, nice. This dog brought his A-game poops. Crumb was sure he was going to be in it, but when Castor said he was too small and too young, he was really devastated. He reasoned that Jovi would definitely be allowed to play on the other team, but Boss, the Great Dane, and Castor's right hand argued that Jovi's dad was the top lion, so their situations were very different. You see, they love their kids over on that stupid team, and we don't. Crumb handled this with dignity. He said, screw you guys, and went home. Castor then thought something that he would never dare say out loud. Double question mark. The team's first practice was not going so well. They even forgot to choose their goalkeeper. Boss suggested Butcher, a mighty bulldog. Since Castor needed everyone to practice, he asked Crumb to go ask Butcher. How? Crumb had already left. Crumb was upset, but he couldn't do anything but follow his order. Or else what? What are they gonna do to him? You know what? I'll tell them I'll only play if you play. But they didn't know that the Jungle Kings had the real King of the Jungle ready for their team, Butcher the Pig! Who said he'd only play if Wabu did, because Wabu's cool. He didn't care if Jovi was allowed to play. In the middle of the jungle, uh, that really doesn't look like the middle of the jungle there. Jovi's father, the Animal King, even offered to train them. But later, I guess, since he couldn't even be bothered to appear on this page. 
page. In fact, King Magad only actually appears on one page of this entire story. But hey, just like a lion, the Jungle Kings have some other real jungle stars like a raccoon and seal. Now, I do like that Wabu gets this little soccer uniform in this version. I mean, Dingo. Page interrupting beer. Back at the town, Fritz kept his promise to help with the preparations. He even asked Samson the bear, the local candy shop owner, to make bag of sweets. Does this bear make all his candy on demand? He also checked with the local band to see how their rehearsal was going. They did not have lyrics to the song yet. But they were thinking maybe they'd sing some Dutch words on top of some German words. They put the rechte topper, we marked the eerste goal. Anyway, the jerk-ass dogs have to relent and let Crumb play so that Butcher will. Again, a very compelling story. They were still teaching little Joby the basics in soccer. You need to stop on top of a giant tree trunk and smile like an idiot to win soccer, Jove. At the tailor shop, Jed the goat was making jerseys for the two competing teams when Pig arrived. Ah, so that was the real name of Butcher the Pig. It's really Pig the Pig. That'll do, Pig. That'll do. I'm glad they didn't cut the important scenes like the uniforms getting made in this book. Guess it's also lucky for Dingo the Wabu that they are making them in the colors he was already wearing. They made their uniforms to suit me! I'm the star! The big day finally arrived. As expected, the whole stadium was packed full. Uh, yeah, filled to capacity. There's like five to seven spectators. Of course, they lied on the pay-per-view broadcast of the game and said it was 50,000 and that they were all on the other side of the arena where the camera wasn't showing. So far, so good. Until a bunch of hula geese appeared. Hula geese are part of a notorious gang well known to be bullies. <sighs> Imagine being bullied by these doofuses. Jacko warned them about causing any mess or fight before Harry and Fritz panicked. What were Harry and Fritz gonna do if Jacko didn't go calmly tell the S&M Ducks to be good, lose their minds? I have to say, this was much better in the movie where King Magad threatened to eat them. If you're making one wrong move, I will eat you. Apparently, that was the least of Harry's problems because a vulture, together with his two assistants, stepped in and grabbed a microphone. As you can see pictured in, uh, your mind. The smirking vulture in the center was about to steal Harry's job, but Harry maintained his composure since the band started to play. So, I guess the band playing somehow stopped the vulture from stealing the announcer job? I don't know. I also don't know why they included this or made it into some kind of mic steal when in the movie it just seemed like they were all calling the game together. Anyway, time for the weirdo cheerleader pigs, everyone's favorite part. And they even copied the same cheerleader uniforms from the movie. Well, the close-up ones anyway, not the alternate ones from the far shots. Oh, I'm glad the book version decided to add a coin toss. They really knew how to punch this story up. I'm going to steal the money and run! And with that, let the game, said Harry, begin, interrupted the vulture. They keep mentioning the vulture, but they don't actually show the classic dingo vulture trio until page 37. Jacko takes a shot, but clearly just has diamonds on his mind again and shoots nowhere near the net. They include the part with Jacko being a jerk off and playing scare tactics on the dirty dogs, which they called a tackle in the movie. And he stops Shasha with a fearless tackle. Smart move from Jacko. He takes the ball, said the delighted vulture. The audience cheered for the first steal in the game. Harry thought that was a foul. Oh, what does Harry Birdhole know? We then get to remember the seal's bad pass, because yes, bad passes can happen. But oh, what a bad pass. 
Yes, bad passes can happen. The Wild Dogs' fans cheered loudly as the members attempted to score the first goal in the game, but Richard the Elephant was able to block the ball effortlessly. Oh, what a dick. Boss, who obviously didn't want them to score, caught up to Jacko, tackled him, and unexpectedly bit him in the leg. Everyone was shocked! Eh? Oh, yeah, very shocking. Edutain for kids are actually being ridiculously accurate to how the game goes in the movie with Boss biting Jacko and such. The referee blew his whistle as Gertrude rushed to help. That's great! He ruled a penalty kick and Harry was particularly unhappy about it. He almost believed that the referee was biased against the wild dogs. Dude, he bit him! Boss is lucky he didn't get ejected from the game! Butcher wanted to quit the game because he was scared of the penalty kick, but he agreed to stay if Crumb was allowed to play on the field. A game does not truly get serious until Crumb is allowed on the field. Dingo, the raccoon, for the penalty kick. Will he score the first goal of the game? Hollered the vulture excitedly. Dingo the raccoon. <laughs> Dingo the raccoon. Well... I can't wait until they sub in Zebra the Walrus. Dingo got into position and so did Butcher. Dingo kicked the ball with all his might and scored! Finally, a goal! This is a vast improvement over the damn hell movie, even if the stupids keep calling me Dingo. But Butcher never actually tried to block the ball. Instead, he just hid beside the net. It seemed that the team hadn't approved his request to let Crumb play yet. So, apparently the goalie is just holding his team up to do a line change. And for some reason, the Wild Dogs would just rather essentially have an empty net than put fresh play. Players in. The game continues and the Wild Dogs has the ball, announced Harry. Albert the Crocodile was able to steal the ball, but the Wild Dogs immediately got it back. Boss passed the ball to Caster, but then Jacko, as if for revenge, pushed Caster really hard and stole the ball. Caster slumped to the ground, injured. Um, that's not Caster there, guys. That's the dog called Boss. The text is staying true to which dog got injured in the movie, and even though they must have been watching the movie to write and draw this thing, they put the wrong dog in there. Anyway, the injury is the only reason Crumb gets subbed in. Butcher's antics accomplished nothing. So then, Gold, everyone's favorite dog that they've never heard of, takes a shot and totally gets cock-blocked by Richard. And it's halftime! Anyway, on the next page, halftime is over. I'm glad they kept halftime in, because otherwise I'd be reading this and just wondering, where's halftime? When is halftime coming? They totally cut the part about the stupid pelican eating the ball. What a loss. Crumb was determined to show he could play well. He got the ball, but the crowd booed him when he accidentally passed it to Jovi. So, yeah, once again, Crumb proved that the other dogs were right not to put him in. Crumb was probably just trying to impress his stupid convenience friend. They clearly get a little bored here, so they just say a bunch of passes and failed goal attempts happened. It's almost like this is an adaptation of a movie with very little content or something. Also, Caster comes back and they show proper Caster, the Doberman, not boss dog Caster. So it's like, yay, the dog that wasn't injured is back. Once again, folks, the score remains 1-0 in favor of the Jungle Kings, said Harry in dismay. With only a few minutes left in the game, the Jungle Kings were determined to keep the ball on their side until the game was over. Playing out the clock, the most exciting part of any sport. The audience, especially the fans of the Wild Dogs, was on edge. Would the Wild Dogs ever score? No! The end! Can't really do an early credits for a book. I can't even close the book since it's a stupid digital book. 
Anyway, Crum intercepts a crap pass, much like the one he had done earlier, and scores the tying goal. Ladies and gentlemen, a tie! 1-1! Crum has done it! The match is over! What a great game, everybody! Overtime doesn't exist, I guess. I also guess they chopped Harry Birdhole in half. I'm okay with that. Everybody agreed that the game wasn't flawless, but they also had so much fun they wanted to have a rematch soon. Cool! Just like in the movie, they do some sequel baiting for a continuation that ain't happening. And the book should know better. Nobody ever did find out who between Castor and Jacko could kick a ball the farthest. So nothing was solved! What a story! Anyway, Jovi and Crumb also remained friends, despite nothing in the game really testing their friendship, so that wasn't much of a story either. So, really, a whole lot of nothing was accomplished. The end. And that's the confusing book adaptation of Animal Soccer World that really has no right existing. What do you think of it, Wabu? Well, I would have been more pissed off with this story calling me Dingo had they not also changed it to me scoring one of the goals, which improves Animal Soccer World tenfold. Ten out of ten! Actually, the story could have still used me way more, so B minus out of ten. What? I don't like this movie, doesn't do friendly, like this wood like is so fake, that toy is gonna break, Famous don't let me down, you need to be around. Grab that chocolate pizza, I even like it cause I want Failus so failus, bring on more comedy Failus so failus, an animation movie Failus so failus, what who really is so fun Failus so failus, what's your opinion about? You know, I got a way better uniform in this book than this stupid movie.